All right, so it looks like you're trying to create a funnel flange. Uh, let's just go ahead and recreate this thing and see if we can get you going. Um, so first off, I'm going to create a sheet metal part, so that way we don't have to convert a normal part to a sheet metal part. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the base square, or the base shape, really. So start a 2D sketch and select our bottom here. This will be the bottom of the actual hopper uh, or funnel. So let's just select it here and do 15 by 15. So that'll give us a 15. You can define these if you want to. So say width equals 15. And let's call this one length. Let's call it length 1 equals 15. And width 1 equals 15. So that'll change it. So you'll see that right here it says width 1. And here now it says length 1. So that way we have our uh, parameters defined. So if we ever want to change it later, it's easy. Um, you can check here if you're f of x, and it shows your length and your width. So now that we have our bottom shape, let's go ahead and use our plane command. Uh, you can say offset from plane or just select plane. Um, I'll show you the quick way. So just select plane, go to your origin, find your base right here, click on it, and you just drag it. So that'll basically drag up and down. So let's call that one 15 as well. And just create S hotkey, create sketch up here. So let's call this one uh, length 2 equals 30 and width 2 equals 30. So now we have our properties there. So we can turn this visibility off if we want. Now we're going to go up to our sheet metal tools here and do lofted flange. First we're going to select the bottom and we'll select the top. And you'll see that it automatically creates the bends all the way around. And then we'll you can do inside or out, depending on what your parameters are set for. So, for instance, our outside envelope is now outside. So if we wanted to do it inside, depending on whether or not we want the uh, sketch to be the driving factor. So the easiest way to check that is let's turn on sketch 2 and look at it from the top. So you'll see that now it sticks to the inside. So that's one thing that you'll know. Um, that if you go the other way, now your sketch two is on the inside. So depending on what your, you know, really design intent is, um, that could be helpful. So next we're going to go ahead and do our rip. So you just select the face and then select the little midpoint and it'll rip all the way through. It's pretty easy. Um, you can obviously do left, right, but always probably this one's the easiest one. And then you can do different sizes and gaps, things like that. But once you have that ripped, there you go, and let's just go up to flange. Now, an easy, quick way to figure this out is if we go to our side sketch here and create a sketch, go to project geometry, project cut edges. Basically all that does is grabs all the edges. If you hit F7, it'll slice the graphics to wherever sketch you're using, and then it comes up. So now you can see that we basically projected this cut edge because whatever the plane is cutting through, it will grab those lines. So there's nothing cutting over here, so there's nothing projected. So from then, we can just draw a quick little line from the origin here to there, and then grab our dimension. So this dimension is going to be key for setting up our next flange. If we go up here to flange, and we select here, you'll notice that it kind of goes down 90 degrees from where it is. Well, we want this to come straight up. So we are going to go for our angle minus that dimension. So what that does is it flips it straight up. So then we'll go around and then select all of our other edges. Let's click here, add the edges to there, to there, to here, and to there. So now we have our edges and we can increase the distance. So now that we have all of that done, the rip goes through and it stays the same. So we can then turn off this sketch because we're not using it anymore. And now we can create our flat pattern. So now our flat pattern comes out. If you wanted to export this, you just right click on the face, export, go from there. So once we have that done, we can go to our folded part. We can go here, add our form. Once the form comes up, you can rename it to whatever you want. So let's call this one funnel size. And then we can grab our length and our widths and just drag that in and hit OK. So now our funnel size, if we want to change this in the fly really quickly, let's say our length wants to be 20, it'll update. 
Now this might have some problems with this little uh, squirreliness because you would have to then set up two different ones if it's not going to be square, but um, let's call it 20 and 20. It should basically come back into square. So if it was the other way, you'd have to create another sketch to basically draw out the uh, angle from uh, this wall. So that's just something to be aware of, but uh, you can easily select this at 40 and 40. Now, if you don't want to have to change these every single time, you can go up to here and say, I want uh, length one and width one to be equal. So then you would just type in length one. So then those two are equal. I would say length two. So now if we get out of here and we go to our funnel size, you'll notice that if we change our length one to 30, they'll both change and we'll change our width 50. And it probably won't do anything. Oh, it will. So length two is 50. There we go. So just kind of how you set it up from the beginning, and uh, if you go to your flat pattern, it'll update to whatever you change it to.